Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is Tuesday, it's November 29th, and it's about 8, 10 in the morning. The market is gonna gear up to open in about an hour and 20 minutes to be specific with you, and I'm being as specific as I could possibly be. The Dow's up about 24 points, the NASDAQ is up pretty good, uh, S&P's meeting is in between. But this is not enough to really make me feel warm and fuzzy. I mean, the Dow took a Dow took us down yesterday about 500 points, from what I understand, 503 points to be exact. And now the DIA diamond is up 0.4 percent. I'm going to tell you, folks, if you're expecting a big bounce from yesterday, you're in the wrong place. Uh, uh, let me show you some goodies. Volatility right now, and I mean, I hate to say I told you so. But I've been talking about this for quite some time, for a few weeks now. I mean, I started sounding like a, like a, a record player or like a parrot, but uh, I'd rather I, I'd rather be a little late, but be on the ball than be early and uh, and give you false information. So the volatility looks like it's about to start coming back up. It looks like it 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 went all the way down to the base, just like it did here, and just like it did here. At this is the twenty level. This is the threshold for for volatility levels declining. I don't think we're gonna go anywhere below that. I think right now volatility levels are about as low as they're gonna get and they're gonna start spiking in the near term. Now, here's something that you need to pay attention to and, and if you're gonna take one thing away from this video and if you're thinking, well, look, look Roger, the Dow Jones yesterday really, really dropped. That was a really big day for the market. Let me just kind of uh, show you on a, on a graph. It wasn't. It wasn't a really big day. It, volatility was, let's see, 343, 337, about seven, 800 points. It wasn't all that bad. And I'm expecting the target to be 200 day moving average. And then I'm expecting us to break that target and go down. Why? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. The SPY has 30, the Dow has 30 stocks. The SPY has 500 stocks. The SPY never made its way above the 200 day moving average. It, here's the 200 day moving average right there right there, that mustard colored line right here. So that was as high as we, we got. And I told you we were gonna start cooling off. So I think we're gonna break the low and come all the way down to the 50 day moving average, which would take the Dow, because remember it's only 30 stocks, which would take the Dow to the 50 day moving average and possibly lower as well. So I am looking for more downside. Now, you're thinking that the market's really heating up. Here's the thing, here's the thing you really need to know. I'm looking at 20 day breakouts and 20 day breakdowns. We're at 42 versus 40. Basically, what I'm saying is this is this hasn't even started yet. Yesterday was just a little turnaround. When this gets to about 500, 450, 550, around that level, that's that's when you know that the market has bottomed out and we're, we we got more. To, but but right now we're nowhere near there. So if you think well, yesterday was a big move, we're gonna have a big bounce. A, if we had a big bounce, I would expect the market to be a little higher than it is right now. And B, we're near the bottoms. And it, it, the, the, the um, support level here is 337.95. We're at 338.90. And it, it, I think we're going to break this down and continue moving lower. And typically when markets open higher after a down day, they tend to gravitate lower. But the biggest, biggest factor is the fact that, well, there's a lot of factors. One factor is, again, there's only 40 stocks making a 20-day breakdown. That's very, very significant, which means we can increase. Now we can go the other way, but I don't think so. And let me show you why. If you look at the SPY, as I mentioned, we're bouncing off the 200 day moving average going down. This route just started and we've got a lot of correction pressure to do. I'm seeing us going down to the, at least the 50 day moving average. On the QQQ, these, this number, this number would be all the way near the 260 because we didn't even make it to the 200 day moving average. It's not looking all that pretty. Now, momentum levels. As you could see here, momentum levels just turned yesterday. They haven't even begun moving lower. The, the, we haven't even started selling off yet. We just kind of turned from positive to negative. Basically, the number of stocks making 20 day highs uh, went from like 80 to 40 and the number of stocks making 20 day lows went from like zero or like 10 to 40. That's all this is, that's repositioning. What about all of this? Hasn't even started yet. That's what I'm saying that that if you look and, and th that completely coincides with the uh, 20 day breakouts, if I can ever find them here again, here they are. 20 day breakout, 20 day breakout, 42 and 40. That coincides with this. This to me looks like we've got a lot more corrective pressure. And if you look at this right now, you will see 
Remember what I always say, when you see all red here, all green here, but this is somehow fragmented, look, 56, 59, 91 for energies, but then 59, 61, 68, 42, 50, 26, 36, 43. There's not a lot of foundational strength here. Now look at the S&P as a whole. The NASDAQ 100 only has 42% of stocks trading above the 200-day moving average. The Dow is at 42, uh, 52, excuse me, and the S&P 500 is at 56 versus 85. That's vulnerability, folks. That's huge, huge vulnerability, and that's telling me that this market is going to cool off. Now, we've got consumer confidence today, and we got home sale index. Let me go through global economy, and then I'll get into the nitty-gritty, okay? Let me just pull this up here and uh, talk about what to expect. And remember, tomorrow we've got the GDP report, which is the barometer for quarterly sales and data because retail sales make up two-thirds of the economy. So if that does not trigger a bullish, a bullish signal, it's very, very doubtful that we're going to get one. And to expect a bullish signal when the, the index has this kind of momentum levels is very, very unrealistic to the upside. Again, I'm just being as honest, as straightforward as I can, which is why I've been short so many stocks and so many of the of the uh, of the programs that we have, because this market is set to go down, and why we've been so nimble on the long side. So let's talk a little bit about global economy here. Three major U.S. benchmark indices finished regular sessions sharply lower after protests in major Chinese cities against strict COVID raise concerns about economic growth, while the Federal Reserve reiterated a stance for rates to remain higher for longer. Very important. In Monday's trading session, Apple plunged over 2% following reports that the tech giant could see a production shortfall of 6 million higher-end models because of worker unrest at the world's largest factory in China. Remember, a lot of those iPhones you guys love are made in China. At the same time, Mr. Uh, Federal Reserve Bank St. Louis Bullard said Monday that the markets were underpricing, underpricing the risk that the FOMC will have to be more aggressive rather than less aggressive to tame the substantial inflation in the U.S. I'm just saying, everybody who's expecting 0.5 may be moving back towards 0.75 sooner than later, as we will see in a minute. In addition, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York president said interest rates need to rise further and stay high through next year due to high inflation, which is something I agree with. Now, here's the, the stuff that I always talk about. The U.S. futures, uh, pol the, 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 the bond market that prices in the 0.50 versus 0.75, look at 0.75. We're now at 30%. Remember, we started off after the last Fed announcement around 12, 13%. Then we went to 17%. Then we went to 19%. Well, we're at 30%. Now, I wouldn't be doubtful if by the time this market cooled off, 0.75 would be at 50%. Because look at what they're saying. They're saying, hey, things are just not all that great, which is true. Today, all eyes are focused on consumer confidence. That comes out half hour after the market opens. I'm not expecting that report to be amazing because consumer spending has just not been all that great. And it's slowing down because energy prices are still expensive. We have huge, huge inflation, and there's no signs of it cooling off forecast the november consumer confidence will stand at 100 compared to the previous value of 102.5 u.s house price data will be reported as well economists estimate this figure to be uh negative 1.2 million compared to a previous value of na of negative 0.7 million that'll be very very interesting shanghai closed higher against all common sense and wisdom after Beijing rolled out stimulus measures while social media rumors suggested, I don't listen to these social media rumors, the Chinese authorities were considering scaling back its zero COVID strategy. The rumors suggested that Beijing would announce an end to the zero COVID policy by focusing on the low fatality rate of recent outbreaks. Till I see it in the news, I don't believe it, and I don't believe anything I read from China anyway. Whoops, probably shouldn't have said it so loudly, but you guys know what I'm saying. They're very, very... Um, Squirrely, that's the word. At the same time, the Nikkei closed lower after disappointing retail sales uh, showed headwinds for the U.S. economy and their retail s s sales weakened. And uh, Chinese retail sales are weakening. And folks, U.S. retail sales are weakening too. There's just no way to keep that ball prompt up so high. Now, looking at volatility, as I mentioned, I'm expecting more upside. Let's look at the bond market, something we haven't looked at in a while. Now, bond market should be moving higher. Notice it's at the upper end of this range. Well, 
If we keep going down, we may get inflated, but I'm expecting this, uh, this downside draft to kind of peak out right around the 105, maybe the 106 level. It'd be great to see it go to the 110, but I don't think we will. I think we're going to peak out somewhere near 105, maybe 107, and then go back down. I'm looking to sell this, but I want it to, uh, I want it to get to overbought levels before I do. And let's take a quick look and see how it's doing right now. Uh, it looks like it is reaching overbought, but not quite yet. Need a little bit more upside. Need this to be uh, bluish. Once this turns blue, like right here, we may sell. But I want to see it go higher, possibly as flight to quality as the market cools off a bit more. Now, individual sectors, folks. Individual sectors. I'm going to tell you where the love is right now. Energy industrial, financial, healthcare, basic materials, consumer staples, and utilities. If you stick to these, you should be okay. Um, be careful with basic materials right now. Technology, real estate, consumer discretionary communications, you do not want to touch with a 10-foot pole unless you want to short it, like I'm shorting Best Buy right now. That's right, it's like that. But the bottom line is you want to be defensive. Now, I know energies are selling off right now a little bit, but to me, that looks like an opportunity to buy. Energy stocks are still leading on my CSI scan and on my older CSI scan that uh, doesn't take in that long of a time period, you still have a little retail, a little a little stuff, but, but it looks like things are changing. But in the big scheme of things, energy is still leading. But in the near term, let me show you what's popping. Gap, Gilead Science, Wynn Resort, I don't know why Wynn is popping, Moderna, Las Vegas Sands, Ross Stores, I think this is a short-term reaction, and I think this will cool back off, which is why we want to use longer time period for the CSI. Um, and here you could see that things have not changed. So when we look at 8, 10, 12 months, it's a very, very different uh, analysis than what we're looking at 6, 3, and 1 month. But in the in back tests, this one does a lot better. So I would say that we're still at a pullback with energy stocks and all of those going out stocks will cool off once again. Now, folks, you gotta be very, very careful right now. I'm looking for the bond market to give me a, a sign that we're going to be moving back down and putting pressure on the bond market, which means a higher yield, which will put more pressure on stocks. Pay attention to today's report. It's gonna be a doozy. This consumer confidence is gonna be big. And I think volume may be a little subdued in anticipation of seeing what's expected for the GDP. Consensus is 100, and the report will come out in a little bit over 90 minutes. Now, folks, before I let you go, one last thing. This is really important. I want to thank everyone, everyone, for joining Celeste for the five-day turnaround live class. If you missed it, you can catch it now by clicking the link below. Do it right now. And if you're on the YouTube Wealth Press channel, you could f find us there and fo follow that link there too. And don't forget, I want comments, feedback, and all the good stuff. Now, as you've seen lately, markets can be ugly for months at a time with very, very, very few positive headlines causing big swings, turning it back around to the upside, meaning we could be stuck in this range for quite some time. These five-day turnarounds, it's much easier to ignore the noise of intraday moves and news events that cause you to miss your decision making and cost you to make the wrong moves by giving you all those shiny bright lights uh, and, and just giving you all the information that's just going to mislead you. If you miss this training, make sure to watch it by clicking the link below. You wanna see the data and how you can start ignoring all of the noise. We're gonna show you how performance works when we're below the 200 day moving average, which we are right now. When we're above the 200 day moving average how how the system reacts we're going to show you data to show you when to buy stocks best of day of the week best hour of the week you do not want to miss out if you've seen this before catch the replay right now follow the link below you do not want to miss out and i'll see you all later remember comments below this video i will respond to you and answer all your questions bye guys have a great great tuesday morning or tuesday day bye